Item 10C, adopt a resolution approving cable, television services and rates effective July 1st, 2011. Honorable Mayor, Members of City Council, good evening. Tenson Gelson, Cable Television Director. As part of the annual budget development process, uh, staff review programming contracts and other operating costs uh, for changes and in consultation with the City Council Cable Television Subcommittee has developed a service and rate adjustment proposal for your consideration and, and adoption this evening. The City's programming costs increased by over 15 percent last year, mainly due to steep license fee increases implemented by Comcast Sportsnet. And the city implemented a 14.86% uh, uh, rate increase to cover those costs. Programming costs are increasing again this year by uh, over 6%, which is much lower than last year, but still a large increase nonetheless. While there is a need to fully recover uh, cost increases by passing it on as a rate adjustment, the city is sensitive to the impact a 6% plus rate increase may have on customer sentiment in this highly competitive environment. But San Bruno, San Bruno residents have a choice of service providers for their video service today. Also, given the depressed state of the economy, customers are switching back, back and forth between service providers who take advantage of promotional uh, offers to save money. To address this shift in customer behavior and to compete effectively in this new environment, the City Council recently approved a expanded promotional campaign uh, to attract new customers and to stabilize the City's market share. The first po postcard mailer of this campaign was delivered to prospective customers this last Friday uh, and has begun to generate new customers already. Given the heightened level of competition, uh, every service provider, uh, provider's customer base is comprised of two groups, uh, customers with the company's standard rates and a group, uh, with, uh, a group of customers that has the company's promotional rates. Although it appears to us that uh, the competing uh, service providers have only a discounted a promotional rate, uh, as they do a great job of promoting it, uh, they also have established standard uh, schedule of services and rates uh, uh, generally. When a promotional period expires, the customer's rate changes to the company's standard rate. If the customer signed a service contract, uh, then the customer has to stay and pay the standard rate through the contract term or face a penalty. Similarly, the city has a, a standard schedule of services and rates. Um, which the city annually adjusts and maintains to cover operating costs and to ensure the continued viability of the enterprise. The city also has pro a promotional rates uh, to attract new customers, and when these promotional periods expire, the city's standard rates apply. So a company's promotional rate is not extended to exist existing customers and should not be interpreted as the standard rate. Uh, the recent past has been challenging, and the days ahead, no doubt, will continue to be, ch uh, to, to be challenging as jostling for market share continues. The city lost nearly 800 BC cable customers during the fiscal year due to increased competition and generally depressed economic climate. This is a phenomenon uh, that is being experienced by the entire cable industry. According to the National Cable Television Association, the BC cable video penetration of homes passed uh, for the industry has declined to 46.5%. Although the city's BC cable penetration to homes passed is declining, it still has a penetration of nearly 51% which is slightly better than the industry average. The city recognizes the impact uh, of this negative trend and has and, has, and will continue to take uh, steps to maintain its competitiveness. As previously directed by City Council beginning July 2011, the city will, will offer free pay-per-view coupons on a quarterly basis, uh, a 5 to 10 percent discount uh, for advanced payment, and a refer a friend uh, pr discount program to reward customer loyalty. Um, and as the City Council is aware, the city's service rates continue to be at the lower end of the uh, scale in comparison to the industry, uh, which is Comcast and Astound in our market, and com comparable to competitors in the market as well, which is AT&T satel and satellite providers. Even though a direct product comparison to competitors cannot be made because of the way the products are packaged, the rates for comparative products are, are reasonably close. In addition to uh, low a la carte rates, uh, the low a la carte rates in the city offers a wide choice of deeply discounted video and multi-product uh, bundle packages. Since the city does not require a contract, customers are free to upgrade and downgrade their service anytime. The city also offers free service calls to all its customers. These uh, are va added values that, that are not offered by other competing service providers. The challenge faced by staff and the cable subcommittee consisting of Mayor Ruane and Councilmember O'Connell 
in developing the recommended service and rate adjustment proposal before you this evening was balancing the need to cover rising costs while preventing negative customer sentiment in this competitive environment. After deliber deliberating on alternatives, including foregoing a basic cable rate altogether and implementing a lesser uh, rate increase, the subcommittee advised staff to scale back the rate increase to a reasonable level that would strike a balance between the two equally important concerns. Uh, as such, staff developed a rate adjustment of $3.04 or 5% on basic cable service. The proposed basic cable increase coupled with other adjustments to digital cable, premium services, and the internet service as described in your report is value, valued at approximately $626,000 in additional revenue. If the proposed service and rate increase, increase are approved, the additional revenue will only par uh, partially cover um, uh, increases in programming costs and leave a budget gap of $112,000. Uh, this revenue shortfall will add to the existing cable fund deficit. The Cable Summit Committee uh, recommends City Council approval of the proposed services and the rate, adju and rate adjustments. Uh, following City Council action, the rate increase will take effect July 1, uh, 2011, and as required by municipal code and federal regulations, uh, staff will notify customers through a bill insert in their June billing statement and additionally post notices on Channel 1 and the department's website. So that concludes the presentation. I'll take any questions from you. Tenzin, could you just briefly describe retransmission agreements and how those things have changed over the last number of years? Absolutely. <clears throat> uh, there are 20 broadcast stations in the Bay Area that uh, San Bruno receives. Uh, Ten of them, um, and every year these, bro these broadcasters make an election with the FCC whether they want to be a must-carry station or a retransmission consent station. When they elect must carry, then every cable operator in the area has to carry that station uh, and ha we have no choice but to carry it. But when a station elects retransmission consent, then the cable operators have to um, seek consent from the uh, broadcasters to carry that station. In the past, uh, uh, these, type of, these negotiations have um, been, we were, we were able to reach an agreement on these negotiations through in-kind uh, consideration. In other words, we would exchange um, advertising, uh, run some um, bill inserts for the broadcast, etc., and be able to uh, uh, reach an agreement by doing that and for carriage. But on a going forward basis, the broadcast, maybe the last two retransmission consent periods, these, actually the consent periods are every three years, occur every three years. The one, uh, the one that we're in right now will expire on December 31st. So over the last two re uh, retransmission consent periods, the uh, broadcasters have began, um, have begun demanding cash uh, cash license fees for carriage, uh, and but so far through the last two processes, two processes, uh, the city has avoided paying any license fees. But over the over the last two years, uh, last few years, the larger cable operators have begun paying a license fee uh, for retransmission consent. So it's making very it's making it very difficult for small operators like the city to to kind of get away with not paying a license fee. So on a going forward basis, it appears that as we look at these upcoming retransmission consent negotiations, that we would end up paying. Uh, a fee for that, for that. So that's really driving basically the bulk of the rate increases for this coming uh, year. Okay. And, and the stations that we're going to be, uh, that are coming up for negotiations at the end of the year are ABC, which is the local ABC broadcast station, KTVU Channel 2, and its sister station KICU, uh, KTSF. And also, as the city council member remember, um, a few, three years ago, we coffee uh, we would negotiate with coffee, and since we could not reach a non-cash agreement, uh, the station ordered us to drop the station. So now, uh, the reason why we weren't able to uh, do that is because had we paid coffee cash, then we would end up paying everybody else cash that would raise the rates overall. So we kind of balanced that and said, you know what, we're going to continue to keep the rates low as, as much as we can. But as, we, as the things are evolving now, where more and more people are paying cash for carriage, then we will look at talking to coffee again as well and see if we can reach an agreement in, and carry that back on our station as well. So that, those will be the five different broadcasters that we'll be dealing with at the end of the year. Okay. Any questions of staff? The rates are always higher. Rates have never gone down. They either stabilize or they go up. Yep, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'd just like to say that, I mean, as I started reading the staff report, um, I started getting that sentiments that I'm sure that the subcommittee got, and I was very pleased to, because we did we did talk a lot about getting those customers back, 
and what type of incentives. We went through reviewing the postcard and everything, and I, and I really look forward to seeing uh, how, that, how that turns out. But once I turned the page, I was very proud to see that the subcommittee uh, reduced, you know, reduced the rate. So 5% um, is, you know, is, is a lot better than 5.5%. So, so, or 6%. So it's good. And uh, I think uh, we have to accept the fact that rates go up and we can't give it away. Anyone else? Yeah. With that, I. Oh, okay. Michael. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, I was um, I was curious about the revenue by um, by product line. How much revenue do? What percentage of our, of the revenue comes from television versus voice versus data? Um, at this stage, um, eighty percent of the revenue comes from the video business. And we have about 20% coming from the internet business right now. Um, and the uh, commercial service, service is just slight picking up right now, so it represents a very small portion of our, our revenue structure. And out of the video side, on the video side, the bulk of it is, is in preferred basic cable, which is the, uh, the rate, the 5% rate that's going to hit that, that segment of the customer, that segment, that service tier. Uh, and there we have almost 7,500 customers. Uh, mostly all customers take that, that level of service. So, that's how that's broken up. Got it. And if you had to make a wild guess about where we would be in five years, where do you see that percentage going? Uh, in terms of, um, it's, 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 that's a very interesting question because as, you, as I've said in the past, the, uh, uh, as you can see in the industry statistics and also what we're experiencing in terms of what the, how, how customers are consuming video today, uh, it's going to be very interesting uh, to see where this all ends up because uh, more and more customers are, are uh, going to Netflix, Blockbuster, Amazon to get you know, movies, etc. So what I'm noticing is that the trend uh, for online video is increasing. So, so I'll be that, that people are changing the way they consume video. From a city perspective, we provide both the video product and we also provide an internet product. So as customers begin to utilize more bandwidth on their internet services, um, that side of the business is going to continue to grow. Um, and in order to address that issue, last year we launched our commercial services in that process. We updated, upgraded our internet uh, uh, network uh, to handle that capacity. And we already have begun offering 25 meg, 50 meg, 100 meg services. So as that demand increases, customers can switch and take those products as well. So when people switch from drop, say, cable services, go to online video content, but they'll still need a higher capacity to access that content, and the revenue model will shift from, you know, today, say, say for example, somebody might be paying the city $99 for phone, internet, and cable. Tomorrow, with a shift in, in the way they're consuming the content, they might be paying $99 just for internet content because they want that higher capacity to be able to do it. So from that perspective, it'll just be a shift. Uh, and then uh, in terms of market share, it will be, uh, it, it's going to be, like I said in my presentation, this is going to be jostling for market share because of the new entrant in the market. And as soon as that stabilizes a little bit, uh, then it's just a matter of competing effectively and growing each business segment. Okay. So okay. Yeah, because one of the things I was thinking about is, you know, at some point it, it becomes unprofitable to, uh, to absorb all of the cost of this, and, and another another thing I was, and this is maybe uh, uh, this question is directed at, at my colleagues on the subcommittee. Uh, w it, has there been any thought about rethinking the franchise fee, and how how the, the, how the, the franchise fee is really affecting the health of the enterprise? Um, it definitely helps the general fund, and maybe now in uh, the current economic uh, situation is not the time we would want to consider cutting that. But if, uh, if the enterprise is um, in, in a situation where it's not economically healthy and there is that huge uh, contribution to the general fund, would we want to consider reducing that? Just to be clear, I, I think that you mean the um, not the franchise fee, but the equity transfer. The, there is uh, uh, federal law provides for 
0.85% franchise fee, which is also collected, and I only draw the distinction because that's directly connect, uh, con collected as, a, as an add-on, uh, as, as, as directly collected from uh, rate payers as every other cable operator okay. in, the, in the country does. Um, but in addition to that, there is the equity transfer into the general yeah, fund, and, and while both of them um, assist the general fund, one is really much more discretionary on our part. And, and, and the answer is yes, it, at least I, I think that is a, there was pre, a preliminary discussion among the City Council subcommittee, and I think it's a topic that, as difficult as it is, um, is something that needs to be considered within the broader context of what is the, um, how, how, do we, how do we set rates and view revenues and expenditures in this environment. You know, we have a lot of challenges here, but one of the biggest ones, of course, is getting the word out. And, and the unfortunate thing is you have some very large broadcasting entities uh, that can offer these uh, lost leaders, and we're not in a position really to do that. We're more consistent, but when people sign up for a six-month deal and then find out that after six months or after a year they really get nailed with a the contract, uh, then we're bringing some of those people back. We hope to do that with uh, just the flyer that went out just the other day. People realize how consistent we are uh, you know, on a regular basis. It's going to make a difference, but trying to get that word out when somebody's dangling a couple of dollars in front of you for six months is difficult to do. So it's an educational process, and we're trying real hard to get that out there. Rico, you have a question? Uh, I just want to, one, more, one last comment. Uh, just from a strategic sort of uh, thinking standpoint, um, I notice a lot, of, uh, whenever we talk about cable, it always, it's always cable television, I and mean, the, the subject of this is cable television services, it's always cable television. And I was thinking that perhaps a, a rebranding and rethinking of how we view that enterprise, where we focus more on a, a more modern, a more focus on, on a data, not just television, uh, might um, I don't know, make it more, more attractive to consumers. Um, that, that are more interested in, in data. And, and, and that's why I was asking those questions about how is that trend working and, and how fast can we expect to see uh, data take over as the, uh, the cash cow. Right. I mean, part of the strategy as described in my report is to eliminate some of the extra tiers that we have on the data side to kind of beef up and have a strong uh, product that will appeal to a majority of the customers. And I think that's a one of the strategies we've taken. In terms of um, and rebranding, so to speak, um, I mean, Sam, using San Bruno, I mean, we're a municipal operation. So using San Bruno is, sounds like, uh, I mean, even in our latest uh, uh, postcard that we prepared, we wanted to put a city logo on there to kind of distinct, distinguish us from any other cable operator. So from that perspective, rebranding it uh, using something other than, we thought about it in the past, but talked about it with the subcommittee as well, but using not, not using San Bruno in that name somehow sort of diminishes uh, our sort of uh, homegrown uh, quality, so to speak, of, of, of who we are. Uh, but, I mean, we've clearly grown from just being a cable TV operation, that's right. for sure. I mean, we're no longer just a cable TV operation. We provide data services, we provide commercial services, so essentially, and phone services, so essentially we are more of a telecommunications company, more so than just a cable company. Um, so, yes, I think um, we do need to uh, start thinking uh, more strategically in terms of how we promote ourselves and how we get uh, more recognition for, for the fact that we're more of a broadband player than just a cable TV company. So we'll continue to look and pursue that in a more aggressively. Thank you. Go. Good show. Thank you. Um, the mayor just indicated this, but we obviously have folks that uh, have left. You mentioned 800. Um, then they signed up for a particular period of time. Normally it's two years for some of the service providers. Have we taken the look at seeing who's left almost two, year, two years ago, realizing that that contract is about up, and then trying to promote what we're currently offering to gain them back? Because obviously theirs will go up, right. ours is down for right. three years, and therefore we can maybe win them back over. Yeah. Just as a suggestion, I don't know if that's been thought of. Absolutely. I mean, that's exactly what we're doing today. I mean, we're not really just sending to those people that are expiring within two years, so, so to speak. But we're looking at all the customers that are not 
subscribing to our services. So that's going to capture not only the people that are coming off of a two-year agreement with a competitor, but also that have just recently left or just recently moved into San Bruno, looking at the whole segment of customers that, that are not, not subscribing to us. I understand that's what the card went to, but are we trying to strategically um, and, and personalize what, is, what the we did, hand yeah. back out and saying, you know, right. you know, uh, the TLC, the, the right. letting you know we're in your backyard, right. we come out, we're right here, you can get a live person, you can come down and see us in person. Right. Um, you know, maybe their experience wasn't the best, and so they'd like to come back home. That's exactly what we try to do with the direct sales campaign. So we basically, somebody's in, in front of the somebody in front of front of another um, front of a customer, pers prospective customer, and actually talking about the services. And also, we looked at our database and actually provide that specific specific database to uh, our direct sales representatives to go target those customers in in, in the uh, campaign. Uh, when you say our sales are the, the agency that was hired? Yes. I mean, we okay. don't have the staffing to send our own no. employees out and there. And you could send Steve Furpo. I'm sure we, we could, <coughs> we could mean, sell Steve everybody. Is, <laughs> Steve Furpo does, does an excellent job of going out and talking to customers and, and keeping customers. And, and Al and myself, we try to, I mean, today, even on a commercial side of the business, it's just Al and I actually, you know, going to the knocking on businesses to get sign up for our services. So we continue to do that on a day to day, ba daily basis. So. Just a, a suggestion, yeah, and then when maybe it comes to uh, the budget study sessions, uh, I'd like to see us uh, address some of the other questions we thought about the future and projections and, and how we see the uh, structure Absolutely. in the future. Definitely. Anything else? Anyone would like to introduce the resolution? Oh, I'll, I was going to make one comment, and oh, I'll introduce the resolution. Um, uh, also, to remind people, we are the only cable operator that offers a 25% discount for any families and residents who are in low income uh, bracket. So yes, this is a 5% raise, but that still is out there and still offered because we are uh, owned by ourselves. So with that, I'll introduce the resolution. Council Member O'Connell. Aye. Council Member Medina. Aye. Council Member Ibera. Aye. Vice Mayor Salazar. Aye. Mayor Ruin. 